Hi there everyone. This video is going to be a quick spec review of a new stack from T-Motor, the T-Motor Velox F7 SE. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through all the specs of the flight controller and ESC to give you an idea of whether this stack is going to be right for your next build. Let's not waste any more time, let's get right into it. Quick disclaimer before we begin, this stack was sent to me free of charge by T-Motor, but they've had no other input or influence on this video. Let's start by taking a look at the ESC, and this is a 50 amp rated 4-in-1 ESC. It's rated up to 6S battery voltage and it's running BL Heli 32. Comes in this nice box and the ESC is on top. Underneath we have the accessories. We've got a stack of yellow gummies, some tall and some short. And we have two cables for connecting to a flight controller as well as a capacitor. And you're definitely going to want to use this capacitor, especially if you're running this ESC on 6S. We have this power cable, this is a standard XT60 pigtail, and the ends are nicely tinned, ready to solder onto the ESC. But it hasn't been soldered for you at the factory, so you're going to have to do that when you assemble this. Looking at the ESC itself, on the top side we've got a shunt resistor for measuring current, and we have what looks like a couple of becks here. We've got a 12 volt beck and a 3.3 volt beck. They are labelled. I'm not sure how much current you're allowed to draw from these. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything on the spec sheet, so maybe this is just for internal power for the ESC. But I'm sure if you had some very low power devices, you could probably run them off this uh, 12 volt or 3.3 volt back here. Looking at the plug, we have a standard plug layout. So this is following the uh, Betaflight standard pinout. So we have battery voltage, ground, current, the telemetry pin for the ESC and then motor outputs one, two, three, and four. So that's gonna be a pretty similar plug layout to a number of other ESCs, but particularly older ESCs sometimes have different pinouts. So you're gonna to want to check. This is kind of the new Betaflight standard pinout, I think. In terms of motor outputs, we've got four different motor outputs and they're all pretty big pads. So it's gonna be pretty easy to solder motor wires onto these. Um, it's not like some other smaller ESCs where the pads are small. You're, you've got lots of space. And if I flip the ESC over, you can see we've got the same size pad on top and bottom. So it's going to make it really easy to get those wires connected. And we have, again, big pads for battery voltage, uh, the negative and positive terminal here. The ESC doesn't have any pin location for the capacitor. So you're gonna to want to solder that capacitor onto these pads as well. And I would suggest probably soldering the capacitor onto the other side from where you solder on the wires, just so that uh, you can make those connections nice and securely. I'd also probably solder the capacitor on after I did the, uh, the discharge lead because the capacitor legs are gonna be smaller. Looking at the sizing of this ESC, it's got standard 30.5 by 30.5 millimeter mounting. And if we look at the size, it's 41 millimeters long by 44 millimeters wide. Putting it on the scales, it weighs in at 12.3 grams. Okay, let's look now at the flight controller. This is an F7 flight controller and it comes in a smaller box. Here's the board and we'll look at that in a second. Accessories wise, we have this baggie containing different height silicon gummies for mounting the flight controller. And we also have a whole heap of cables with different plugs so that you can wire everything up to these cables and then plug it into the flight controller. And we'll talk about the plugs on the flight controller in a little bit. There isn't any mounting hardware included in this flight controller or with the ESC. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have some long M3 screws and nuts to mount up the stack, um, just to make sure that's all gonna to fit together. Looking at the flight controller, there are lots of things we can talk about. Here's a wireless module in the top left. That's going to allow you to control this flight controller over Bluetooth from the SpeedyB app on your smartphone and makes it nice and easy to change settings while you're out in the field. We have an F7 microprocessor on this board. That's the slightly faster chip. It's going to allow you to run 8K gyro, 8K PID loop with RPM filtering and dynamic notch filtering turned on. We've got an ICM42688 gyro chip. That's the latest generation of gyros from ICM. They have really good performance and I would recommend them. We have a huge 128 megabyte black box storage chip. This is gonna give you plenty of logging time, even at 8K, so that you can tune your quad or debug issues, that sort of thing. Working around the edge of the board, we have all of the pads for peripherals, and these are nice and large. They should be pretty easy to solder to. 
We also have these slightly smaller pads which are jumper connections. This one allows you to select between 5 volts and battery voltage for your analog camera. This one down here allows you to select between 5 volts and 10 volts for your VTX power supply. And this jumper here is a pit mode jumper. If you make this jumper, all of the 10 volt outputs on this flight controller will be controlled by pit mode. So you can turn off your VTX, completely off. You can cut its power using pit mode on your flight controller. And that can be handy, particularly in a racing setup. And we have some LEDs here to indicate the power status of the flight controller as well. Flipping the board over, and you can see you might not end up using many of those peripheral pads that we looked at earlier, because all of the peripherals are broken out into plugs on this flight controller. We have a plug for the analog camera, a plug for the ESC, a plug for the LED strip, a plug for a analog VTX, and a plug for a digital VTX, and this plug is for your receiver. So you can pretty much connect everything to this flight controller apart from GPS using plugs. The analog camera and analog VTX output also have an OSD chip, so that's standard. You're going to be able to get your analog OSD if that's the system that you're using. And the USB port on this flight controller is a USB-C type, which is nice to see. That's going to be the standard cable, I think, moving forwards. We also have a nice big boot button on the flight controller. So you can put it into bootloader mode should you need to recover it or flash a new version of beta flight. In terms of size, the flight controller is 37 by 40 millimeters on its longest dimensions. And sticking it on the scale, we get a weight of 8.8 .8 grams. So that brings us to the end of this quick spec review. T-Motor are offering this stack at a price of 90 US dollars, and I think it offers a really great set of features for the price. You've got that wireless connectivity, F7 flight controller, 128 meg of black box, and you have a 50 amp rated ESC with BL Heli 32. That's a pretty good combination at a pretty good price. If you enjoy this type of short spec review, it's a new format that I'm trying out, so please let me know down in the comments. And if you want to see the test results for this ESC, I'll be testing it with the next batch of ESCs that I do. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. That's all I have for you for today, so until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.